Have you ever wondered how anesthesia works? It's not as simple as falling asleep, you know. Picture yourself starting to count backwards from 10 and then waking up with the procedure already over before you even got to 5. You weren't asleep. You were under anesthesia. An intricate process that renders you unconscious, immobilizes you, prevents memory formation, and most importantly shields you from pain. Imagine the trauma if we weren't able to block these processes simultaneously. Without the ability to block all these processes at once, many surgeries would be way too traumatic to perform. Ancient medical texts from Egypt, Asia, and the Middle East all describe early anesthetics containing things like opium poppy, mandrake fruit, and alcohol. These substances found in nature were the first tools in our quest to control pain. They numb the senses, making surgical procedures less traumatic and more bearable. Fast forward several centuries and we stumble upon an accidental discovery that would revolutionize pain management, cocaine. This discovery was nothing short of serendipitous. An ophthalmology intern while handling this substance got some on his tongue. He noticed a numbing sensation, a revelation that led to cocaine's introduction into the world of anesthetics. While its recreational use has overshadowed its medical applications, it's important to note that cocaine's anesthetic properties paved the way for the development of many regional anesthetics we use today. It's still occasionally used as an anesthetic, but many of the more common regional anesthetics have a similar chemical structure and work the same way. But for major surgeries where you need to be unconscious, you'll want something that acts on the entire nervous system, including the brain. That's what inhalational anesthetics do. Inhalational anesthetics ushered in a new era in the field of anesthesia, with diethyl ether and nitrous oxide leading the way. Diethyl ether, once a popular recreational drug, found its rightful place in the operating room in the 1840s. Doctors realized that individuals under the influence of ether often didn't register pain from injuries they sustained. This discovery led to its use in dental extractions and surgeries, transforming the patient experience. Meanwhile, nitrous oxide, also known as laughing gas, was gaining popularity. Its ability to induce a euphoric state while minimizing pain made it an effective anesthetic. Even today, nitrous oxide remains a mainstay in dental procedures and minor surgeries. As the understanding of anesthesia deepened, the medical community sought to improve upon these early inhalational anesthetics. This quest led to the development of ether derivatives, which offered several advantages over their predecessors. For instance, sevoflurane, a common ether derivative, is less irritating to the airways and has a faster onset and recovery time compared to diethyl ether. Such improvements have made sevoflurane and similar compounds more prevalent in modern anesthesia. However, inhalational anesthetics do not work in isolation. They are part of a carefully crafted cocktail of drugs that doctors use to manage pain, induce unconsciousness, and ensure patient comfort during surgical procedures. To achieve the desired effects, inhalational anesthesia is often supplemented with intravenous anesthesia. Intravenous anesthesia was developed in the 1870s and represents another significant milestone in the history of anesthesia. It includes a wide range of drugs such as sedatives and opioids, which work together with inhalational anesthetics to provide a comprehensive anesthesia solution. Inhalational anesthesia is usually supplemented with intravenous anesthesia, which was developed in the 1870s. This combination approach allows anesthesiologists to tailor the anesthesia to the individual patient's needs, improving the safety and efficacy of surgical procedures. Common intravenous agents include sedatives like propofol, which induce unconsciousness, and opioids like fentanyl, which reduce pain. These agents are often used in combination, administered directly into the bloodstream for rapid onset of action. They're the secret sauce in the cocktail of drugs that make up general anesthesia. Let's dive deeper. Sedatives, such as propofol, are central nervous system depressants. They slow brain activity, leading to relaxation and drowsiness. This is why they're often used to induce unconsciousness, creating a temporary state where the patient is not aware or responsive. On the other hand, opioids like fentanyl work by binding to opioid receptors in the brain. These receptors help to control pain perception. When opioids bind to these receptors, they can effectively block pain signals, providing relief during and after surgical procedures. But here's where it gets really interesting. These general anesthetics, they don't just put you to sleep or block pain. They also alter the brain's electrical signals. In our waking state, our brains are a symphony of electrical impulses, 
a chaotic chorus of different parts talking to each other. This is what keeps us awake and aware. As we introduce general anesthetics, this symphony begins to change. The chaotic chorus calms down, the signals become more organized, and the different parts of the brain seem to stop their chatter. It's like the brain is going into a deep, organized rest. But as someone becomes anesthetized, those signals become calmer and more organized, suggesting that different parts of the brain aren't talking to each other anymore. This is the fascinating world of intravenous anesthetics. There's a lot we still don't know about exactly how this happens. But let's delve into what we do know. The mysterious world of modern anesthesia is a complex dance of chemicals and biology. A primary player in this dance is the GABA-A receptor. It's like a gatekeeper in the brain's neurons. Several common anesthetics bind to this receptor, holding the gate open, allowing negatively charged particles to flow into the cell. This influx of negative charge acts like a log jam, preventing the neuron from transmitting electrical signals. But that's not the whole story. Anesthetics don't just act on one part of the nervous system, they influence multiple pathways, affecting movement, memory, and even consciousness. This is why, under anesthesia, you're not just asleep, you're in a state where your body can't form memories or move, and hopefully can't feel pain. But it doesn't stop there. Anesthetics don't just act on the nervous system, they also have effects on other vital organs. The heart, the lungs, the liver, all can be influenced by these powerful, yet delicate, chemical compounds. This is where the artistry of an anesthesiologist comes into play, ensuring the right balance is struck to safeguard these vital systems while still achieving the desired effect of rendering the patient unconscious and pain-free. But like any powerful tool, modern anesthetics come with their share of risks. Potential side effects can range from mild, like nausea or dizziness, to severe, such as allergic reactions or even heart complications. And while these are rare, they underscore the complexity and challenges of modern anesthesia. Despite these challenges, the advancements in anesthesia have been nothing short of miraculous. From the crude concoctions of opium and alcohol in ancient times to the precision of today's anesthetic cocktails, the progression has been remarkable. Yet the quest for understanding continues. So, as we peel back the layers of this complex field, it becomes clear that the role of an anesthesiologist is one of incredible responsibility and skill. So, an anesthesiologist has to mix just the right balance of drugs to create the desired effect without causing harm. And in this delicate balance, they hold the key to making surgeries possible, to alleviating pain, and to unlocking more of the mysteries of the human body and brain.